Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about HDMI eARC, Enhanced Audio Return Channel, and why it matters to you as a video enthusiast who needs great surround sound in 3D audio formats. So before we go on to the rest of the video, I'm just going to give you a summary of whatever I'm going to be talking about. So if you don't have time to stay around for the rest of the video, you don't have to. Just understand the quick differences between all the cables that I'm going to be talking about. In the first incarnation of transmitting video and audio, there were these analog cables, the yellow one for video and the red and white one to transmit audio channels. These are two channel formats and even in the 3D surround form, and even in the surround format, you keep running more and more cables. So basically one cable for each channel of audio. So needless to say, the video quality on this was actually very, very bad. It probably maxed out at about 480p. And in this particular implementation, it was only capable of producing two channels of audio. Now moving on to the next format, which then becomes digital, is this optical cable here. So if you look at this optical cable, it is actually transmitting some form of light. And if I could show you, see, it actually uses light to transmit. And it is capable of transmitting two channels of uncompressed audio in stereo format. If you move to surround sound, it is also capable of producing 5.1 channel, but in a compressed format. The optical cable is not capable of transmitting video. It just doesn't have enough bandwidth to do so. And fast forward many, many years, you will come up with the HDMI 1.4 cable. The HDMI 1.4 version was the first version to introduce audio return channel. Now, there's a distinction between ARC and EARC, which is not introduced with 1.4. So version 1.4 of the HDMI specifications created an additional channel for you to return sound. So HDMI cable is primarily used to transmit audio and video in one cable, one direction. Now with 1.4 implementation, it also open up another channel for you to return sound to the soundbar or the AV receiver. Now the total bandwidth specification for this cable is 10.8 Gbps and it doesn't have enough bandwidth to return full lossless audio. So you're limited to a video quality of 1080p as well as compressed Dolby Atmos format. Now, Dolby Atmos is not supported in all implementation of HDMI art because it actually requires the TV to be able to support Dolby Digital Plus, which was introduced at a later date. So there's no guarantee that your TV with an ARC port can support Dolby Digital Plus, which means to say you may not be able to get Dolby Atmos. Now, the surest way of getting full uncompressed Dolby Atmos as well as DTS-X is actually with the implementation of HDMI 2.0. So HDMI 2.0 carries a bandwidth of 18 Gbps, so it's a very, very high-speed cable already, capable of transmitting 4K video at up to 60 frames per second. With 2.1, it increased the frame rate to 120 frames per second or 8K at 60 frames per second. So video quality is definitely pristine and it is also capable of returning audio at full uncompressed format. It will be able to support DTS-X as well as Dolby Atmos in lossless formats. So that was a very quick introduction. So I go into detail into each of these formats very, very quickly over the next couple of minutes. So the RCA cables, these analog cables were introduced in 1956 and it was capable of transmitting analog video signals as well as analog audio signals. If you have a TV that is very, very old, more than like 20, 30 years old, it is probably capable of connection only via these means to transmit audio and visual. And in that particular setup, the most you could get out of it was actually a stereo format. But, you know, subsequently, the AV receivers uh, started getting a left, center, right channel as well as the surround channels. So a total of six cables to support the surround sound formats. But that's kind of irrelevant in today's standard because nobody really uses these kind of cables anymore. So the next up, we have the optical cable. Optical cables are very interesting. They are not made of copper in its core. It actually uses glass fiber and it is able to transmit light. Okay, it uses light and pulse modulation to actually signal sound sources. Now, it is only capable of transmitting sound, but it's still being used today. And at that point in time, there was a slight shift. People started routing um, audio to a AB receiver and the RCA cable was still being used to transmit video signals. But that didn't last very long because the HDMI cable was introduced at the turn of the century, at the turn of the millennium actually. And when you use an HDMI cable, it's capable of producing 
very good video quality as well as audio quality. So your surround sound, all the six cables, all the six channels was transmitted via one cable and the video was also capable of being transmitted here. It supports up to 1080p full HD video format. So the picture quality is actually great at the turn of the century. And the convenience factor was high because you only need one cable to transmit both the video as well as the surround sound formats. But with the advent of 3D audio in the form of Dolby Atmos as well as DTS-X, more bandwidth was required. And with the requirement for more bandwidth, then things started heating up in the HDMI specification. So you reach HDMI 2.0 and HDMI 2.0 was when eARC was first introduced, Enhanced Audio Return Channel. So besides sending a high quality 4K signal over HDMI 2.0 and 8K over HDMI 2.1, you were also able to get return audio channels in uncompressed format. So it simplified connection greatly between the TV and the soundbar or the AV receiver, all you needed was one cable and anything that is playing on your TV, which includes live channels, would then be able to send the sound back down to your AV receiver or your soundbar. So this was the first time that EARC was able to carry lossless surround sound formats in the form of Dolby Atmos through HD formats as well as DTS-X uncompressed surround audio. And so if you're serious about sound quality in your audiovisual setup, then I would highly recommend that you start looking for equipment that has support for HDMI eARC from version HDMI 2.0 and 2.1 onwards. Now, before I go on to recommend the right cable to use for your HDMI 2.1 and 2.0 connection, I have to state that this video is not sponsored in any way. I am just recommending to you what I use. This is a Ugreen cable. It is a HDMI 2.1 specification cable, and it actually supports 8K resolution at up to 60 frames per second, or with HDMI 2.1 specification, 4K at 120 hertz variable refresh rate. I've connected my PS5, my PC with a NVIDIA 3000 series card to my LG CX TV, which supports HDMI 2.1 ports and variable refresh rate up to 120 Hertz. It worked beautifully. Now cables, I do not believe that they enhance your picture quality in any way. You just need to get a well-constructed cable Things that last, this is fully braided. It is pretty thick and very sturdy. The casing at the end is made from aluminum. Very well built, very well constructed, should last you a very long time. In fact, I've changed all my cables in my entire setup to this U-Green cable. I'll leave the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. I will make a small fee from there when you buy these cables and they are not expensive at all. So don't go around spending your money on high-end cables by branded companies. They do not improve your video or your audio quality. You just got to make sure that it does the basic job of transmitting the signal, the digital signal, reliably and clearly without handshaking issues. And this cable actually meets the requirements. So I hope I've helped you in understanding the differences between the cables as well as, more importantly, the difference between the HDMI 1.4 as well as the newer spec 2.0 and 2.1 with EARC implementation. So if you have any questions about this, do leave a question in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you. If not, I'll see you in my next video.